Brothers and sisters, today we're going to talk about what is at the heart of hatred. And my friend's going to help me. He's going to be asking me questions, and I'm going to be answering them for you. So go ahead, Frank. How do you free your heart from hatred? Freeing your heart from hatred involves understanding that all of your problems do not have an external source. Now, let me explain. To have a problem with anything in your life, you have to, you have to really consider how you're viewing it. To view yourself as having not enough money, for instance. To view yourself as not having the proper relationships in your life, for instance. It's all about how you see your life. But more than that, it's about finding solutions based on what you truly want. Behind all of these desires we find ourselves drawn into based on our, our hopes, aversions, and fears, and cravings. And really getting down to what it is to be human. We have to look at how we filter reality. Now, the human filter, our understanding of reality, is what everything is fed through. So, getting rid of hatred involves understanding how we see the world and then altering it. Seeing the world as something that we can use in order to progress instead of something that hinders us. We have to be able to find solutions, and in order to do that, we have to see the world for how it truly is. Getting rid of these filters that hinder us on our spiritual path. So, to get to the heart of hatred, to remove it, we have to get to our own heart. And our own heart ultimately is love, compassion, connection with God. And once we have that connection, that hope, that compassion, that true hope, then we can move forward with the knowledge that we can actually do things in our lives that matter. Not just have this constant burden of everything that is wrong, but everything that is right and how we can move forward and alter everything that we consider as wrong. Go ahead. Okay, so since we have all these wars, um, current, I mean, since... Time before, immemorial. Yeah, <laughs> World War, World War One, Two, yeah. Cold War, Vietnam War. Um, who, okay, so who has, is there a black heart of evil? I mean, the heart of evil is just unskillful living. To live in this world, we have to figure out how to truly be human. And that involves getting to our responsibility as this the highest sentient race on this planet. Our responsibility is to preserve our environment, to preserve each other, and to catapult our own spiritual journey towards contentment and understanding of the universe as it truly is and not how we want to believe it. So we have to get rid of a lot of the propaganda and a lot of the programming that we come into contact with throughout our lives. From the second we are born, we're told what things mean and uh, this is what religion we are. Or, oh, these, these religious ideas are stupid and science is right. Or, or science is the devil and all these religious ideas are correct. Uh, we're programmed from the second that we jump into this world. And to truly understand the ultimate idea of evil is to understand that it is unskillful living. Uh, an inability to be content with who you are, an inability to understand that we are part of a whole that doesn't require selfish desires, that doesn't require taking from other people. And when we do take from other people and we do have selfish desires and basically live our lives based on those, that's when we truly live a terrible life, a life of pain. The only way to live a content and progressive life in spiritually and in society is to understand our unification with the grander whole. And society is an aid to that, but it is not the end to that. It is not the end in, end in of itself. What we have to do is find that deeper root from which society came, from which we come. Trace ourselves back so that we can catapult ourselves forward. So evil itself is just a misunderstanding of the fact that many beings on this planet uh, are living unskillfully. They don't know what they truly need spiritually, emotionally, mentally. And they work based off selfish, selfish desires that are incredibly short-sighted. But the greatest, the greatest cause that we take up that helps us and everyone else is to do what we can for, every, for everyone around us. Um, humanity itself around the globe. And then we actually reach a level of contentment that we would not reach if we just had selfish desires. So live skillfully. Live, uh, that's what good is. Live skillfully. That's what virtue is. Live skillfully. To live an evil life is to live an unskillful life, a lack of understanding, a presence of ignorance that is not overcome.
Anyway, go ahead. So, are you uh, relating to, like, okay, uh, black card of evil? Uh, like, who's the most evil? Does it matter? Like, military, society, or just man, the soul of man's inner soul? Like, human, it, it's soul all, of human. It's human. all based, there, there is nothing in the soul of humanity that is inherently evil. It's just the illusion of our, of our filters that we filter reality through in order to understand. Now, if we truly saw everything as it is, and acted based on that, there would be no evil in the world. There would be no abuse, there would be no violence, there would be no hatred. We have to truly look at why bad things happen to us. Now, when bad things happen to us, we feel like it is from an external source. We feel like we had no hand in coming into contact with a negative aspect of reality. But in truth, we always have some hand in all the things that happen to us. And you say, okay, how about a starving child in Africa? Did they do anything to become a starving child in Africa? And then that's when the idea of karma, which has certain proofs based on reincarnation and all the accounts, uh, comes into play. But regardless, from that point, even if you're at the worst point in this world, among humanity, even if you're at the bottom, you feel like you're the poorest, you're the most hungry, you must, ass you must assess the situation properly first before you can act in a way that gets you out of that situation. And it's not all about looking at everything differently. It's not all about reevaluating your life, saying, okay, at least I'm human, at least I'm, at least I'm here thinking. It's about being able to assess everything properly so that you can move forward out of the position that you were in. So as far as which part of humanity is more evil, as far as warfare or the, the war side of society or society or any kind of group in society, it's more about working from where you are and not where you think everyone else is. Working from where you are, you can affect the world in a positive way that basically grants you the title of, of a leader. A leader who can direct somebody from a, a posture in this world, a, uh, a foundation in this world that is steady. Your, your mind, your soul, your spirits. Once these things are steady, you can lead people towards towards virtue, towards so-called goodness, towards an effective way of living, a skillful way of living. So it's about addressing the world and dealing with yourself first before you analyze external means, external existences. So go ahead. Oh, I got one more. You want? To... Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. So how 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 does one see God in everything? How does one see God in everything? You have to not use just your eyes, but also your heart, your logic. How did this thing come to be? How did this thing come into my existence, and how did I come into contact with it? If you understand that, if you really look for that, then you will see miracles abounded around you. You will just see miracles expanding in all directions, in, all, in your very understanding, in your attempt to see. You find that the root of your attempt is the divine, that you are urged to see by your deeper nature. You're urged to become content by your deeper nature. And once you apply that and not see yourself as an individual, but as part of a grander whole, you can see that in everything. You start with yourself, look at yourself truly. And then once you find that divine in yourself, then you, try, then you, you can obviously and plainly see that it is behind everything. Because you see that there are no lines to your body. You are everything and everything is you. So you, once you see yourself truly, you can see everything truly, and you see God behind everything truly. And it is a wondrous experience, because once you see God behind everything, that's when the true journey to spiritual unification with God begins. Thank you very much for watching. I hope all of you all have a great day, and I will see you in the future.